So here's the product that I think I'm going to try next uh, on my um, uh, heat pump and furnace combination. This is a product called uh, Desert Spring. Um, it's actually been bought up by General Air now, so it's uh, it comes from General Air. And it, it's actually a, kind of a, a rehash of the old standing water humidifier with a drum, except what they've done is they've replaced the drum with a series of plastic discs. And these discs will rotate through the water and pick up uh, moisture as the air blows through them and pass the moisture onto the air into the house. The benefit of the discs is that they don't gum up and get calcified and lime covered like the old drums do, which have to be cleaned about uh, periodically probably once a month or so, or else um, they would harden up and be kind of useless as a humidifier source. So we're going to install this and try it out and see how it goes. The instructions um, of this humidifier say that it should only be installed on the cold air return um, and not on the plenum. Um, I have no idea why they say that. Maybe the heat of the plenum uh, might affect it, but I will follow the instructions and uh, and do as they recommend. Now the unit comes disassembled with a drive side and a takeoff side, and you can mount these in either side. So if your plenum is on the left or your plenum is on the right, um, it'll accommodate those that installation. In my case. My return air is on the left and my plenum is on the right. So I'll put the drive motor on the left and the takeoff, air takeoff on the right. The motor installs on the outside. Uh, there are two tabs that fit into slots and a clip at the bottom that also inserts into a slot. Similarly on the outside, uh, the air intake fits in the same way with two tabs and a clip that snaps into the bottom. So this fitting fits into the hole on the bottom of the unit with a threaded nut and it comes with a cap in case you don't opt out for the opt-in for the uh, for the automated flushing system and the cap will seal this and prevent it from leaking and also allow you to open it in the springtime and drain the water out of the uh, humidifier. The oblong hole on the uh, that side of the humidifier is where the float assembly um, attaches um, and then just below that hole there's a knockout uh, for an overflow hose that you can attach and it it normally doesn't uh, come with a unit but if you purchase the uh, automated flushing system the hose does come with it because as you're flushing it obviously the overflow water has to go somewhere so you need to have a, a drain local to the furnace so that uh, as you're flushing it and as the water level rises it'll be able to flow out into the drain. I used a half inch uh, drill bit to knock the uh, knockout out and even at that the hole was quite tight but it actually uh, turned out pretty good because I was able to thread the fitting into the plastic um, for a more secure fit. On the other side we have uh, the fitting uh, with a uh, included uh, rubber washer. And then a large brass nut is threaded on top on the other side. So hopefully, we'll have a watertight fit.
Uh, they do include a length of uh, this uh, half inch hose. Um, hopefully it'll be long enough. Uh, the drain for my uh, furnace is right behind, so it should be able to reach it. This is the float valve that they've uh, included with the humidifier. I'm not overly impressed with uh, the quality of it, uh, but we'll see how it goes. Um, the unit or the, the float valve fits into the slotted hole on the side of the humidifier. And sliding it up and down controls the height of the water. So there we have the float installed and it's secured from the other side with a plastic nut and a flat washer holding it in place. Included in the kit is an extra float stopper. It's just a rubber stopper that you can um, um, use as a replacement for one that's already in there. So if you're wondering what, what this is in the kit, this is an extra for you to hold on to. They include a length of a quarter inch uh, tubing, similar to ice maker tubing, and a elbow fitting that uh, just slides on to the float. And then the tubing pushes on from this direction. They've included this template uh, to cut out the hole on the uh, cold air return side. Uh, essentially, the hole is uh, seven and seven eighth inches wide and six inches high. I'm just going to use a level, mark it out myself, and make the cut. So I've marked out my hole. Unfortunately, it's right over the nice green Boonstra sticker, but that's okay. I'm going to drill a hole and then use some tin snips to cut it out. I've made the cut out in the cold air return. Um, there is a bracket now that you have to install just above the hole on which the humidifier will hang. Uh, try to level it as much as possible since there's going to be standing water in the humidifier. You want it to uh, maintain a certain level. With the provided self-drilling uh, screws, I've mounted the uh, bracket on top of the hole. Now the unit slides in to the top of the bracket and sits on the hole. That's pretty much it. There's no other fasteners that uh, ma uh, maintain it to the duct. The included damper uh, that comes with the unit will be used to mark the opening for the uh, hole. Uh, and it also uh, allows you to close the flow of air in the summertime when humidification is now required. So that's the winter position. This will be the summer position. I traced out the hole using the damper as a template and I'll uh, drill my pilot hole and uh, cut it open using tits, tin snips once again. So as you can see, with a little bit of uh, consternation and some swearing, the, uh, the hole is cut with some tin snips and we'll mount the uh, damper in place with the included self-drilling uh, uh, screws. So now we have to provide water for the humidifier. Um, they include this uh, saddle valve that you use to pierce um, a cold water pipe. Um, I don't like these and uh, I'm not going to use this since I already have a source of water from my previous humidifier. Um, and I'm going to use that to just reroute the pipe. Rather than use the included saddle valve that came with the humidifier, I decided to properly solder in uh, ball valve uh, to supply the water um, for the system. I actually installed it into the hot water line and I'm hoping that hot water going into the humidifier will help in the absorption of the moisture into the air. 
Okay, I've uh, run in the water line um, and I haven't uh, secured anything yet. I'm gonna wait till I have it all installed and working to make sure I don't have to make any changes before I do any uh, permanent uh, uh, securing of the lines and, uh, and the feeds. Um, the motor is driven by uh, uh, 24 volts and the unit came with um, a 24 volt transformer plus a manual humidistat. Um, I'm not going to use this and I'm not, I don't need the transformer because my furnace uh, provides a 24 volt signal from the thermostat um, for humidity control. So I'm just going to feed that to the lines on the motor and that will control the uh, operation of the humidistat or the humidifier. So I'm going to put these away. Now the other problem with these manual humidistats is as the outside temperature changes you have to regulate the level of humidity that you want in the air. If it's too cold and you've got too much moisture you'll get condensation on the windows. If you're not going to use or you don't have the ability to hook up your uh, furnace to the humidifier you should purchase an automatic humidistat. An automatic humidistat has a temperature sensor that goes to the outside and will regulate the amount of moisture inside the house based on the outside temperature. That's the best way to do it and that's the best way to uh, get the right level of humidity without getting too much humidity that you risk uh, too much condensation and um, in some cases if you have too much condensation you'll get mold developing around the windows. So now I have my uh, 24 volt feed coming from the furnace, uh, which is calling for humidity. Uh, it's connected. I opted to use uh, spade lugs to uh, connect it rather than the wire nuts that came with, with the system. And as you can see, the uh, drum is now turning. So we've got 24 volts coming from the furnace calling for humidity. Next step is we have to connect the duct to the bypass air. And um, included with the humidifier was a short length of flexible ducting. I'm gonna use that for now uh, just to get the system going but I plan on replacing it with uh, some rigid six inch duct with a couple of elbows uh, to make the installation more permanent once I get everything functioning properly. So as you can see, we have the uh, duct in place for the bypass air, uh, which is now flowing into the humidifier. I've opened up the valve and uh, the uh, water level is has come up to a certain level. As you can see, the, the discs of the humidifier are going through the water, picking up moisture, which then will be blown through the discs and then into the cold air return and then into the house for humidification. Now all I have to do is put the cover on, see how the system's working and clean up all the wiring. So once the uh, unit filled up with water, I noticed that it was getting very close to the top of the lip. And when I looked at the back, the weight of the water had, had pulled the uh, humidifier away from the duct. That bracket is not strong enough to maintain it hanging close to the duct. So what I did is I drilled in a couple of self-tapping screws right through the plastic into the duct to keep it tight uh, to the uh, return duct. So that leveled it out and kept the water level down uh, below the lip. Here we have the finished installation of the Desert Spring humidifier with all the wiring and piping secured. Uh, and uh, underneath you'll see the auto flush uh, timer valve has been installed and is working properly. I'll cover the installation and use of the valve in a subsequent video. After a couple of weeks, this uh, humidifier is doing exactly what it's supposed to do. Our outside temperature has gone up and down a couple of times, 
but the humidity level has been uh, maintained accordingly. So uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you later.